What's going on everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. So we have some Zeus talk today. Um, I'm sure you guys are, were hoping that we would have a Cool Tool Tuesday with Jeff. Unfortunately, uh, Jeff was a no-show. I'm sure he's busy still trying to get his son, Junior, uh, running routes and getting him set up. So he's kind of dropped back to every other week. Uh, so until he can make sure that Junior's good to go, uh, we probably won't get an exact week to week to week like we were. So every other week we'll be doing Cool Tool Tuesday. So I've been quite busy at the shop uh, between the time frame that I originally got the scan tool until today, which is Wednesday, so we're getting ready to roll right into Thursday. And I have run into several issues over the last two or three days, okay? We're gonna talk about some of those known issues today, what platforms they're on, and some of the solutions to some of the issues I was having as a result. We're gonna be talking about that. I did pick up a low amp clamp. This should be the 60 amp, and it is the 2060 amp clamp, part number EETA. 308 Delta. Uh, I did have Garrett push this through and order it when I had bought in the scan tool, but it had to take a couple weeks to get here because he didn't have one on the truck. I really hope to learn more about the utilization of this low amp probe. Uh, I have seen several videos of other diagnosticians using this uh, to check coil ramp and to check amperage in a circuit uh, given certain parameters or things that it's doing. So I don't know all the ins and outs of this, but I am excited to be utilizing it. The only thing that I remember from these low amp clamps is that you can A, plug it into your DVOM, B, I can connect this to the scope. Now I can turn it on to 20 amp, I can put it on 60 amp, and every time I go to use it, there's a zeroization button that you must push to zero out the amp clamp before you go putting it on something. So all those features are well and good. I believe the last one I had was a 40 amp and the mouth on the 40 amp was a little bit smaller than that really made for smaller wires so i'm hoping this is going to fit around the majority of battery term battery cables so that way i can check if there's any kind of parasitic draw and what kind of amperage i have uh, that i'm losing and as a result or going through a specific circuit so we'll set that off to the side but i'm killer excited about that uh, my buddy nathan from polly's auto uh, he, we, him and I have been talking back and forth quite a bit. He knows that some of the things that I've been diagnosing uh, within the last week, one of those was on a Ford 6 liter, um, did have some issues with compression or lack thereof in sonar number one. Uh, found that out later because as I was going through uh, certain steps uh, between doing a buzz test and a cylinder um, contribution test, at any rate, I only got so far with it trying to learn how to uh, diagnose this dead mist that I was getting. So I didn't get a chance to dive all the way in, but he said that this pressure transducer uh, might help and there's a way that you can actually uh, use it and adapt it in doing a compression test. So that's going to be really cool to actually try out and see on a scope. I haven't seen anything like that on a scope. I know there are a lot of channels out there that have probably done something similar to what it is that he's discussing. So I look forward to watching a handful of these other great diagnosticians out there. I've been getting a lot of help on the uh, Snap-on Diagnostics group, which has been phenomenal. Uh, if those of you that don't know what it is, it's a group that Nathan and I have put together uh, for not just uh, the most experienced diagnosticians to be a part of who already own like the Zeus or the Triton or the Apollo. Uh, or who have been doing it for a while enough to get their like master ASC certifications or advanced level. But we really want to bring on younger generations that are just getting into diagnostics. It's okay that they don't have a snap-on based diagnostic tool, but this is a foundation of the group. So some of the issues that I'm gonna be talking about in this video, I have made mention of every single day I've had issues and they've been a lot of people helping me along the way to try to get down to what's actually going on, as well as a lot of different phone calls and waiting on hold with the Snap-on Diagnostics group. I actually did have a Snap-on Diagnostics rep that did come out to the shop and he's gonna make everything right and I'll go ahead and tell you how he's gonna do that. But first, let me talk about some of the things that I did not know going into this. First of all, the Zeus comes in two different platforms, Windows 7 and Windows 10. Windows 10 is the most up-to-date platform of the Zeus 
tablets, okay? Some of the viruses, they're on Windows 7. Some of the first Zeus's that came out were on Windows 7. Uh, but there, are, there is a Windows 10 Zeus, and you're gonna want that one because there's other protocols that are embedded into that software for what was explained to me by this diagnostic rep that came out for Volvo, for, Land Ro or for Range Rover, or Land Rover, I think it was Range Rover. So for Volvo, for Range Rover, Mercedes, and maybe, was it Maserati? I, there's another one, but at any rate, you need this specific protocol in order to connect and communicate with those and use uh, various, uh, get the various PIDs that you're looking for, as well as bi-directionals and, and so forth and so on. So that was an important piece of information to know. The second thing, that was frustrating, and I'll play a little video clip here. Let's just roll the video clip first. All right, so as you guys seen, I was double tapping on the diagnostic suite upon power up. This thing would open it up and then it would disappear and I'd have a desktop background. And if you tapped anywhere all over the screen, eventually you can get lucky and it might open up the suite. It might work or it might shut itself back down. Okay, well that was a software glitch and it was happening to basically anyone that was running on uh, Windows 7 from what I gathered from the group because a lot of people that had the Windows 7 that did the Windows update was having the same exact issue. So I had to call Snap-on Diagnostics, let them get command and control of the machine. They went through, worked their magic, removed the latest software updates, brought it back to normal. Some of the guys that are a lot smarter than I am that have the Zeus already figured that out on their own and removed those updates and they were back to kind of running normal too. And in fact, in the group, they kind of walk you through what it was that they actually did. So that was killer awesome. But luckily for me, I didn't have to deal with it. I just called uh, Snap-on Diagnostics, let them do it while I was working. One of the helpful tips that I got from the group chats though, uh, was also to turn off the automatic updates because, because they're having so many issues right now. And what I mean by they, because Snap-on is having so many issues with Google, there's multiple issues here. It's not just the software updates, but also if you were to try to hit the little red X button or minimize button or expand button at the top, uh, you would realize that it will not minimize, not expand, and you cannot close it. That is a Google issue uh, that they are trying to work through as well. So that's not because of the bad software updates that we just had, that's a separate issue. And they're working with Google to try to figure that out. So you do have to either close the tab or down at the bottom of the screen, press and hold the icon until it starts to create a circle and then close tab. So a couple of different ways of going about it outside of the normal way. Yeah. Given the parameters of this Windows 7 platform, so another thing I was told was that I had an out of date dongle. So that's not 100% accurate, but it is accurate to a certain degree. So if you're running Windows 7, you're gonna have a diagnostic Bluetooth dongle that looks like this with the LED, okay? Now, the one for Windows 10 is a bit longer. From what I'm told, I have not seen that yet, but it is a bit longer, and then I think you kind of lose the rubber grip on it as well. Unfortunate, I love the fact that they put this rubber grip on there, should you accidentally drop it, and hopefully it lands on the rubber grip and not on the tip, right? But I love that feature. Hopefully they still have something like that for the new dongle, I don't know. Those of you that have the Windows 10 version, I've seen a couple on YouTube, but they did not have the covering. Let me know if they do that for you. All right, so that's that. So with the Windows 10 platform, you will get a slightly longer dongle because there's different firmware built into it that communicates with the Windows 10 version of the Zeus. I have a couple of things on order. So this next week, I should be getting the charging docking station. So what I like about, listen, this is free, okay, this comes with the diagnostic tablet, um, the docking station or charging station does not. Now I managed to get mine, 
put into the overall bill of things that I have going on. So that should be arriving here this next Wednesday. Things that I did not already have uh, incorporated onto my credit that I'm gonna end up having to pay cash for is there's a uh, transducer split adapter that you can attach to the top. Now, this is one of those other things that was pretty funky. So I was told by the Snap-on Diagnostic Center uh, that this auxiliary port was no good for anything. That is incorrect. And even the Snap-on Diagnostics rep that came out said that that person, for lack of better terms, did not know what the hell they were talking about. This is where your pressure transducers will go and there are a couple of other accessories that you will or may end up using uh, to include inductive probes and things like that. So that's what that's actually for. I'm glad that I actually made that post within the Snap-on um, Diagnostics group because they explained it to me and I confirmed that. I was like, hey man, everyone says I can use this thing. Do I pull this thing off? What's going on? What fits on here? Can you show me on the screen of what all the different adapters that I could possibly put on there? And there's a lot. So I'm actually surprised that the guys over at the call center don't know that. But I was basically told it was a mistake. It is not a mistake. I've ordered an inductive amp probe, which should be coming. I've in, I also ordered a, a pressure transducer for up to 100 PSI. He said that was going to be a good one to have for smaller sensors. Uh, the one that uh, Nathan sent to me, I believe, is to be like a high pressure for diesels and stuff. So I think that's probably close to about 5,000 PSI. Pretty high, though. Pretty high. Expensive. So. Nathan, thank you very much. Again, brother, I know you didn't have to do that. And he, he is doing that for me. And it's super cool to have uh, friends like that that I can talk to, communicate with. And uh, he just wants to pay it forward. And I think that's super awesome. So I really appreciate that. Guys, there's a lot of great guys in this group. So if you're just getting into diagnostics and you want to learn more, there are other diagnostic groups. And I want to talk about that briefly for a minute. Let me get my phone. Okay, so there's the Snap-on Diagnostics group, which we've created. There's Automotive Scan Tools. That's a really sick group to be a part of. Uh, I also like, there's Simply Diag YouTube. And there's AutoMD, Diagnostics Discussion and Repair for Professional Technicians. So in this specific group, this is Cody's Diagnostic Group. <clears throat> if you guys don't know who Cody's Auto Diagnostics is, I'll put his YouTube channel down in the description as well as a handful of others that are part of these groups. But he's created this group, so in this group they have announcements, they have webinars, so I'm getting asked all the time, hey man, in the comments, uh, how, what can I do to improve and learn more? I'm tired of changing tires and brakes. How do I get to the next level? There are webinars and things uh, within this group that you can actually take courses in and learn more. So I'm looking forward to doing uh, some of those hopefully going into the weekend. There's also the uh, online training that O'Reilly's has to offer. So if you haven't already talked to them, poke your head in at O'Reilly's and say, hey, I heard you guys have some online webinars that I can take and try out. So do that. And then there's all these different guys that have all these great diagnostic channels that you should be watching and following. Polly's Auto, New Level Auto, South Main Auto, Cody's Diagnostics, okay? Chad, the welding junkie, like I've talked to, so many people. Doug Wilson's been extremely helpful uh, in the group. I'm not sure if he has a channel or not, but just a lot of really great guys. So, all right, one more thing before I actually go ahead and close this out and tell you what Snap-on's actually gonna do for me. Some of you that have the Zeus, if you might have noticed when plugging in this charging cable to the Zeus, maybe it's not the cable, maybe it is. If you were to place your hand on the screen while it is charging, and or you're on it for an extended period of time this thing gets hot like samsung note 7 hot like a grenade hot right this thing is hot hot to the point where you could boil eggs on the thing so i guess this doesn't happen with every single one of them some of them get hot or warm ish or a little bit beyond warm but some of them get super super hot where it is incredibly hard to touch and i was told that there's a good possibility that the internal cooling fan may not be working correctly. Uh, so they're gonna change the whole unit out. Uh, the new unit that's coming in, we'll probably see that here within a week. It's uh, supposed to have the built-in Windows 10. It's supposed to have, you know, the fan is supposed to be operational, so we're gonna be starting all over. 
There was a lot of things that I didn't really quite dive too much into, and I'll kind of cover some of these other things along the way. Last thing I want to make mention of is when it comes to emails. Last thing I want to make mention of is emails. So some of you that might have the Zeus that you might be wanting to send an email to your shop on might not have been able to do so. And there, were, I was told by the Snap-on Diagnostics call center to use a, it's a third party site and it's emspaceclient.com and this site is a third party app that you would use, type in your email information and so forth, it saves it and then you're able to send uh, your bitmaps, your PNG files, your code scans that you did through the Altus drive to the shop's email and then that's it, no big deal. Uh, so that's what I had to do. There's other ways that you can of course set it up to email, but all of which I believe is also a third party app. This is different in the way that it's not like your regular laptop. You don't start off by typing in your email to get started. This doesn't do that. That's missing this, that specific portion of the computer is missing from the tablet. It's not in here. It's on a regular PC. It's not on this. Yes, this is Windows based. It's not the same exact layout as your laptop. So if you're having issues with that, that's what's going on. It's a third party app. You got to download. There's others out there too. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did, smash the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Share if you're going to share. I appreciate you watching as always. Cheers and deuces from your boy at the Grand Canyon during sunset. We made it. This is making it. Beautiful, isn't it? Incredible.